I'm going to show you how to pair your sensors to your Wahoo Element Roam computer. This is uh, assuming you've already got it fired up and you've got all the updates done. So all we want to do here is we want to go to the menu. So press this key on the side. This is the power button. You just press it one time real quick. It goes to the menu. And then the button over here, just use that to scroll down to add sensor. Add sensor press add at the bottom this is my Wahoo ticker my heart rate monitor we got to get it to come on so to do that just uh, make a complete circuit here and now it has found it save ticker hit save at the bottom add heart rate to data pages so I'm gonna say yes so it's automatically gonna do that for me and now we want to move on to the next sensor Okay, next sensor I want to pair up is my Garmin RVR315 radar detector. So once again, we're going to go to the menu. We're going to scroll down to add sensor. I'm going to hit add. Now I'm just going to turn this on. Press and hold the button. This turns on, put it near the Wahoo, and it'll pick that up. Save radar, hit save. It's got a warning in there, blah, blah, blah. You have to hit more so we can read the whole warning and then accept it. And the radar is now added. We want to add my speed and cadence sensor. I have a uh, duo trap sensor. That's what I use for speed and cadence. So we're going to go, we're still at add sensor. So what we're going to do is activate the sensor. This one starts activating as soon as I send the magnet past it a couple of times. So we're going to click add. Going to hold it down near this sensor. All right, speed and cadence. Hit save. Add cadence data fields to pages. Yes. Now that's connected. And the last thing on uh, my bike, I have DI2 shifters on my bike and the DI2 wireless module, I installed it inside the down tube. So I'm just going to activate the DI2 by pressing a couple of times. Make sure my DI2 is activated. Hit add sensor one more time. Add and I'm going to hold it down near my DI2. Save Shimano DI2. Save. Add gear selection data fields to pages. Yes, I do like to have the data in there. So there we have it over here. It's showing right now my speed and cadence sensor is still activated and the DI2 is still activated. So it's picking those up, showing good signal on both of those. The ticker right now is not activated and my radar, I shut that off so it's not showing any signal there. So that's it. All of my sensors are now added to my new Wahoo Roam computer. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your Wahoo Roam sensors using the companion app. Once you have all your sensors paired up, you're going to want to go into the companion app. Make sure you're paired up with your Wahoo Roam. And once you're connected, scroll down to Sensors. And then go into right below that Setup Sensors. You're going to see a list of all the sensors that you paired up here. Now you want to go into each one and make sure that you have made any configurations that you need to make in here. This one really doesn't have anything. The ticker, other than renaming it, we don't want to do that. If you go into any speed sensor, it's going to give you the opportunity to configure your wheel circumference. And when you go in there, you want to make sure that you set it up for the actual size wheel and tire that you have. Um, mine, I already set it up. Mine is a 700 by 32 C tire. As you can see, there's lots of selections in here. So you want to make sure that that's set up for the right tire. It's going to give you the most accurate 
speed reading for that. So when you first go in there, you're probably just going to see it set to auto. So you just turn auto off and then it'll give you your options in here or if you know the exact cir circumference you can enter that manually right here in meters 2.155 meters all right so then go back out if you go into shimano di2 for example it's going to ask you to configure your gear ratios so you go in there and you're going to tell it what size chain set you have how big is your small ring the big ring and which what kind of cassette you have and you go through and you enter all this information for your DI2. When you go into radar as well, you can set the alerts on the radar. And there's some other options in here for the radar that you can set. And I'll go into that in another video, how to set up your radar. So this is just uh, to show you that once you've paired your sensors, you do need to go in and configure each sensor to make sure that you have everything set up the way you like. All right, if you like this video, please hit like below and thanks for watching. If you're having battery charging issues with your Wahoo Roam cycling computer, maybe it's not charging all the way or maybe it's not charging at all. It could be because you're using the wrong charger. The Wahoo Roam only comes with a charging cord, so you will need to find a USB port or USB charger to plug it into. You actually don't want to use the USB port on most computers, laptops, or tablets as they don't have enough power output to charge your Roam computer. So I looked it up on wahoofitness.com and it does say, do not use Apple brand charging blocks. Try and use the included cable whenever possible. Don't use a computer USB port or a laptop or a tablet USB port. They typically don't have enough power because the Roam does require 10 watts to charge properly. That means two amps of output at five volts. Here's the charger I got on Amazon. It's an Anchor. I've used Anchor products for a while and I'm pretty happy with them. This is just a standard USB output. Each port puts out five volts by 2.4 amps. So that's over 10 watts. So that is what we need to charge the Roam. So this does the job very nicely. Any of the chargers that are non-Apple brand that you can find on Amazon that are at least 10 watts output, if it doesn't give the wattage output, make sure it says at least two amps output in each port, if it has two ports. So there you have it. Uh, just a tip for you if you got a new Roam and you're having trouble with the charging. So if you like this video, please hit like below and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to pair and configure a Garmin radar detector. This is an RVR 315 to a Wahoo Element Roam. So first we want to pair the Garmin sensor with the Wahoo. So first thing you need to do is turn the Garmin on, hold the button down until the blue light starts flashing. It is now trying to pair. So what we're going to do is go into the menu using this button here. Just a quick menu. Then we want to scroll down to sensors. We want to scroll down to add sensor. Using the buttons on the side. Add sensor. Hit add. And it's now going to scan and look for any new sensors. Once it finds the radar detector, save radar. It's picking it up on Ant Plus. We're going to hit save in the middle here. It's going to give you a warning. You got to read the whole warning about safety when using radar, blah, blah, blah. Accept it. All right, so now it has added the radar under the paired sensors. And after a bit, it's going to show you the relative signal strength of the sensor. So now that that is paired, we're going to scroll back up to that sensor. We're going to hit more. This one is fully charged, so your battery mode is good. Alert mode is on. You can turn that off. You can mute, and then you're not going to hear any tones when a car is coming. So that's an option. Okay, so let's get back out of that. 
now that we have it paired up hit the menu key again get back to this now we want to configure it in the companion app so get yourself paired up in your companion app if you don't know how to do that I have a video I'll link to in the description on how to do that then you want to get here scroll down to sensors set up sensors go into set up sensors you'll see the radar there which is connected because we have it on go into that you can rename it if you want but here we have alert settings so we want to go into our alert settings turn alerts on and what happens here is you'll see a little green roadway here and you'll see cars coming up on this roadway as they approach you from the rear and I'll show you that in a moment so in the settings we have the ability to have that roadway on the right side or the left side or if you don't want a roadway you can just use the LEDs on the side here they will light up as a car approaches you so also in here you can also turn the sounds on or off and I want the sounds on because that's going to alert me when a car is coming so let's go back to the original way this is the way I usually set it up but I'm going to show you exactly what it's going to look like I'm going to put the Garmin in demo mode and that's done by turn the unit off press and hold the button until the light turns yellow then immediately let go of the button all right now the Garmin is in demo mode so it's just showing you cars coming so you can see what that looks like when no car is coming it's green if a car is coming fast this is going to turn red if cars are coming at a reasonable speed it's going to be orange so it's showing you that here and you can hear the sounds going off so if you wanted to use it on the right screen it's going to look like that and if you want to use just the LEDs going to look like this so the LEDs kind of tell you what's going on if a car is approaching and it's green all clear now it's showing you a car is approaching and it kind of shows you how that car is gaining up on you so that's what it looks like when you're using your radar press that down until it turns off and you're good to go and that is how to pair and configure your Garmin radar detector to your Wahoo Element Roam computer. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and please subscribe. Thank you. How to check the battery level of your wireless DI2 shifters on your Wahoo Element Roam. So if you've got the wireless feature on your DI2 shifters and it's connected to your Wahoo Roam computer, not only can I see what gear I'm in on my computer, but I can also just check the battery real quick before I roll out for a ride. All you need to do is hit the menu key, scroll down to the DI2. This is the DI2 right there. This is showing me the signal strength between my DI2 wireless module, which is in my bike, which is behind me, and the computer. So I got a pretty good signal here. So if you highlight the DI2 and just hit more it's going to give you your battery percentage of your DI2 so my battery right now is 50 percent on my DI2 so I am going to plug that in and start charging that back up I'd like that to be closer to 100 percent and that's how you do it if your Shimano DI2 shifters did not come with a wireless feature or you don't have the wireless feature you can add it uh, I'll link to a video that I have how to do that, but you can also check your battery level simply by pressing one of the junction box buttons and I'll show you that next. So if you want to check the battery, all you need to do is press any of the shifters for a half of a second. You're going to immediately get an indication on this battery icon right here and then it's immediately after that going to show you what shift mode you're in. So the first light is all we're worried about right here. So if we hold it, it's a flashing green over the battery. So that tells us that we have somewhere around 50% charge left on the DI2 battery. So it's time to plug it in and charge it. If it's solid green, that means you've got closer to uh, between 50 and 100%. All right, so if you found this video helpful, please subscribe and hit like below. And thanks for watching.